Hi gang, before we crack on with today's episode, I feel compelled to warn you that it's got some spicy language in it. Tim Sterling, fucking prick, fucking prick, fucking fucking prick, prick. So anyway, here we go talking about gambling, yes, again, but for a good reason, because Ubisoft kicked off some shit again, and also, well, I'll stop talking about it when the game industry stops fucking doing it, won't I? Oh, Ubisoft! In case you hadn't learned by now, Ubisoft is a reckless, short-sighted, greed-fueled corporate entity walking a tightrope of unsustainable ideas and dragging its swollen carcass from one get-rich-quick scheme to the next. This is largely because it's a major AAA publisher, and major AAA publishers are generally reckless, short-sighted, greed-fueled corporate entities walking tightropes of unsustainable ideas and dragging their swollen carcasses from one get-rich-quick scheme to the next. While the mainstream game market cooled off a little, on the hottest moneymaker going, loot boxes, their infectious presence can still be felt in a number of so-called AAA series such as Call of Duty, Overwatch and FIFA. While the mobile market is a shameless scum heap of random chance purchases, many of which are directly targeted at kids. Ubisoft, being the blinkered trash fucker that it is, recently praised the grotesque rise of the loot box, calling it a major boon for the industry. Going to bat for the decision to put loot boxes in trials rising, an Ubisoft rep defended in-game gambling mechanics by saying they're good for business, and people buy them, which means they're automatically justified, before using that well-worn and tired non-argument of, they're not a bad thing if they're done right. The defense of the system was posted in the Steam forums after players criticized Trials Rising's gamblerific design. Yes, it does mean that some players end up spending more on our games than others, and that does result in increased profits for us, said the self-styled Ubisoft underscore warlock. It also helps us to put more money into new titles and to understand what players look for in their games. If players simply didn't buy these crates, they would not be added into games in future. All in all, loot crates, cosmetic items in general, have been a huge boon for the gaming industry, being a driving factor in the increased popularity of gaming over the past decade or so. They aren't a bad thing if done right. This alleged warlock also hid behind the usual it's optional excuse, stating you can always just not buy them. Now we've torn the optional argument to shred so many times and it's clear by now that industry defenders will just ignore those arguments willfully to repeat a lie over and over again in the hopes it'll become true. But for a very quick recap it's not optional because you don't have the option to not have microtransactions in the game in the first place. And as we've seen when games like Shadow of Mordor and Battlefront 2 had to be completely rebalanced after they were taken out, we know by now that loot boxes and microtransactions inherently alter the design of a game. Games that are deliberately made unfair, grindy or otherwise diminished in quality to make the in-game purchases appealing, unless they're shoveled in at the last minute like they were with Mankind Divided, and that's something nobody gets to option out of. That's not a choice. I know for some of you I've said this time and time again, but the AAA industry keeps repeating the same lies, and lies they are, which need to be countered again and again. Anyway, I naturally take a lot of fucking issue with what this representative said, because it's all a load of complete fucking bollocks. First of all, trying to argue loot boxes from a noble position, from the position of it helps them make more games, can fuck right off. Fuck off, Ubisoft. You know how you get money to make games? You sell your damn games. After Assassin's Creed Odyssey's six special editions, Totino sponsorships, Alexa tie-ins, microtransactions, and season pass, if you aren't making enough money to make new games, your business is completely shit and you don't deserve to be in business. What are you doing if all of that monetization and that DLC and those tie-ins aren't enough for you? Don't lie. You're only doing it so that shareholders can ejaculate. That's all you're doing it for. Don't lie. Why are you using the prospect of new titles as a carrot on a loot box stick? Isn't that your fucking job? Aren't you supposed to be in the business of making games in the first place? Oh wait, no, 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 you're in the live service industry now, aren't you? And if I recall correctly, spoiler, I do, Ubisoft only recently said that it intends to make fewer games that generate more cash per release using the games as service model. So uh, we inherently know that Ubisoft putting all this money into more games is bullshit. Ubisoft 
Ubisoft is in the business of making games, it's in the business of making live service after live service after live service. The whole they're not bad if done right excuse is another very tired and worn out justification that's been used by industry spokespeople for years and it's a totally useless non-sentiment because it doesn't really mean anything. They never actually explain what right is and that's largely because AAA publishers don't even know what right is anymore and as has been revealed time and time again they're not interested in whatever this right way is because of the sheer number of games we've seen that have emphasised microtransactions and gambling and all the psychological manipulation that goes into those elements to the detriment of the games themselves. And considering microtransactions belong in free-to-play games, and always have, there is literally no right way to put them in a premium-priced game, and I won't hear otherwise. They simply don't belong there. Their presence in the mainstream gaming market has been utter fucking poison, and just because they've been normalised through repetition by the ravenous fucks in charge, I'm never going to accept them as normal, and certainly not as right. But let's get to the real heart of the matter. The statement, if players didn't buy these crates, they would not be added into games in future. Piss off. To Ubi Warlock specifically, to Ubisoft in general, and to the AAA game industry as a whole, I say this in response. Fuck you. Fuck you, you predatory, exploitative, callous, audacious fucking scavengers. You duplicitous shovelers of digital filth. You can fuck right the fuck off with the insincere slime that dribbles from your decaying mouths whenever you try and validate the harmful business practices and your decision to steadily erode the value of your games while asking for ever more money. To the argument that loot boxes exist because people keep buying them, that's a terrible excuse in and of itself for anything, really. People buy cigarettes, that doesn't mean they're a good bloody thing, especially when cigarettes, just like gambling, make a tidy sum off people who have gotten well and truly addicted. Let's all do remember that the game industry, by its own proud admission, makes a huge amount of money off whales, a deliberately dehumanising term for the comparatively tiny amount of players who spend the most amount of money on microtransactions. A game company can pretend loot boxes are mega popular by pointing out how much cash they rake in, but I wonder exactly how many people are buying them versus the 2% or so from fraction of whales who are spending thousands and thousands of dollars. It's a dangerous business model, albeit a lucrative one, putting a ton of eggs into a tiny few baskets, but when it pays off, appealing to these whales can make a company millions. But it is still a tiny percent of the game buying public, so when a company says, if they stop buying, we'll stop putting them in, what they're really saying is they don't care about the vast majority of their customers and they sure as shit don't care about the negative impact that in-game gambling and microtransactions have demonstrably, historically, had on a video game's design. They care about a few people with more money than they know what to do with, and a few people who don't have that kind of money but may well have a gambling problem. In the UK, the number of underaged gamblers has skyrocketed in the two years since loot boxes found new popularity among AAA publishers. In 2016, Overwatch repopularised the concept of the loot box and the AAA industry couldn't get enough of it. Publishers tripped over their own drooling tongue in a bid to fill their games with gambling mechanics and in that same time period child gamblers quadrupled across Britain, exploding to 450,000 young gamblers. Of that number, 50,000 were identified as problem gamblers. During that same time period, the amount of loot boxes and randomised microtransactions in the mobile market has just been disgusting. Some of these games are literally targeted to kids. There's a mobile game where a child character cries if you click away from the in-game purchases. And let's not forget that time that Warner Brothers strangled a kid in a Harry Potter game unless you paid up, keeping the kid throttled on a timer. What is it with these mobile games and the leverage of a child's safety or happiness? Oh wait, wait, yeah, of course, it's because it's fucking manipulative. But back to child gamblings in the UKs. Now correlation is not causation, but in this instance I'd argue there's no correlation at all because loot boxes are gambling. So they're the same thing. They employ the exact same mechanics, they manipulate their audience with incentives, with time-wasting grinding, they exploit the sunk cost fallacy, tricking players into thinking a payout's coming if they just keep spending more money. The only difference between loot boxes and gambling is the fact that technology moves faster than the legal system, and they've simply avoided regulation due to the law not being able to identify them yet. Keyword, 
yet. That is starting to change. In countries like the Netherlands and Belgium, loot boxes have already been classified as gambling, and in Belgium they must be removed from video games or otherwise break the law. So in some countries now, the industry has been found out, its scams been rumbled. As a result, game publishers have been shocked, as corporations often are when they find out that sometimes, ever so rarely, the law actually applies to them as well as everyone else. Electronic Arts has stated it intends to defy Belgium's laws and will die on the hill of in-game gambling to protect its entitlement. To put gambling mechanics in FIFA, a game marketed to children aged 3 and up, so committed to its greed is EA that it is prepared to literally commit crimes to let kids gamble. Incredible. The UK Gambling Commission specifically named and shamed loot boxes in its study on underaged gamblers, quite literally linking the work of AAA publishers and mobile game developers to the problem. Meanwhile, the Australian Gambling Commission found that loot boxes encouraged problem gambling, the addiction that can see people ruin their fucking lives in the pursuit of a randomly generated high. And speaking as someone with addiction issues, not gambling specifically, but with the mental profile that could see me have gambling issues if I ever gave in and started started buying loot boxes, I cannot overstate how knowingly, how fucking knowingly harmful the game industry has been in implementing gambling within its products. Unregulated gambling in a world where gambling's regulated for a friggin' reason. And all these gambling commission reports, the country's roping loot boxes into gambling law, I fucking said so, didn't I? I said this would happen and people pushed back. It's not gambling, they told me. It's not a problem, they told me. And as with so many other times, I warned that if the game industry wouldn't clean its own house, someone would come in with a steriliser and do it for them, which is what we've been seeing. Certainly in countries where we've already seen them clamp down, but official commission reports are a solid foundation on which regulations can be built. Just as I warned, mainstream news sources like the BBC are now picking up on these stories and the pressure is officially on. Even in the US, where major companies are treated more fairly than human beings, some politicians have spied in-game gambling with an eye toward legislation. And I think in all seriousness, a number of trip Play publishers had to know it was coming. They had to know that if they kept pushing gambling, eventually the commissions and politicians would get interested and want to rein them in, and they just didn't fucking care. They just didn't care, because a publisher only cares about its next financial quarter. If it makes money now, who cares about its impact on the future? Not that that sentiment could apply to a number of other businesses in even more worrying ways. <coughs> Climate change! <laughs> Oh, sorry, I had something in my throat there. I meant to say climate change. Publishers like Ubisoft, Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts and Warner Brothers are all disgusting. They are all absolutely utterly disgusting. They sicken me. They are toxic, they are predators, and they don't care what they've done. I have always maintained that I don't push for government regulation of video games. I'd rather have seen the industry regulate itself, like it did with the ESRB. But the industry wasn't interested in that. The ESRB literally wasn't interested in it. It instead chose unregulated and addictive gambling mechanics to explode its profits to an unsustainable degree that shareholders will demand answers for or when or if that explosion blows up in everyone's face. So at this point I say fuck it, bring on the regulation, why not? Tax the fuck out of these companies if they want the loot boxes. You might as well regulate the lying sacks of shit. Because it's gambling, it literally is. And it's no longer just one wacky idiot Brit yelling that it's gambling, it's literally gambling, as defined by worldwide gambling commissions and the legal systems of several European countries. Oh and don't worry about the publishers, they will just move on to the next get rid quick scheme. They're committed to making their games less valuable but more expensive and they will keep doing that regardless. But in any case, it's been a long time since the AAA game industry was subject to some bloody accountability. They will never be responsible on their own. They will never take charge of their own shit. Corporations love to be legally treated as people, but in reality they're rabid animals devoid of any other instincts than to consume. So put the companies in a cage or put them down. At this point, either option is fine by me. Fuck them. I don't know, I just felt like being a skeleton today. Anyway, I received an email, uh, it was sometime about l like last year, from a fan of the show who had a brother who uh, dealt with gambling issues, uh, was a problem gambler, and he and his brother bonded over video games to take his mind off of the gambling. 
They used to do it with FIFA, uh, football games, sports games, but the FIFA Ultimate Team bollocks and the loot boxes were basically too much for him. So they moved on to a different game because that game was starting to trigger those problem gambling urges. They moved on to Call of Duty. Not long before Call of Duty started putting loot boxes in its fucking game. And there we have it. That, that, was, that, that was it for them. No more Call of Duty. Had to move on to something else. Now, I can't do it justice. Uh, I might have to get their permission to publish the whole thing at some point. But reading it made my fucking heart break. This is someone who had genuine problem gambling issues, was a problem gambler, looked to video games to cope with it, and I can certainly speak to how video games can be a, a huge help to anyone with any sort of, of psychological struggle. But the very video games themselves essentially turned on him. So from the bottom of my broken heart, I repeat the phrase to the game industry, fuck you. How anyone, how anyone can look at what they're doing with their microtransactions and their loot boxes and not see it as exploitation and predation. I, I just don't know how it's possible. Because it is. It quite blatantly is. It's designed to be. And I must repeat again for those at the back, for the people who do say, well, I don't feel exploited, I don't feel preyed upon, you're not the prey. They're not going after everyone, they're just going after the people they can prey upon. So the max transactions may not be designed for you, but they are designed for the victim, for the prey. Thank them, and thank God for me. I really can't breathe in this thing, actually. I mean, I was going to say some more, but it's... Uh, it's humid in the skull. <laughs>